Welcome back to the Reaper blog. In this video, we're looking at what's new in Reaper 6.64, including changes to the Media Explorer and rendering. And before we get into the change log, if you missed any of the previous videos in this series, there will be a link to the playlist down below where you can catch up on every change from Reaper 5.0 to today. We're going to start this off with changes to project markers. Menu item to select marker in Region Marker Manager. Display selected markers slightly differently in Ruler, as well as for rendering support rendering between project markers. So let's first put in some project markers. So this will be A. Put another one here. B and here. I'm going to go to the View menu and go to the Region Marker Manager. And in here, there are all of the project markers. I've got a start marker and then three markers I just added in. If I click on any of these, you may see that the icon actually changes. So rather than a circle, or I guess that's technically a octagon, uh, it's now a square if they are selected. So there's start marker selected, a marker selected, I shift click, I can select two of them. So there's a function to select markers now, and that changes the icon. And with the selection, we can do things like rendering the project between markers. I also want to show you that if you right click on a marker now, you can select marker. So now my marker one and marker two are selected. And then I'll have to zoom out here, but B and C, three and four, are not selected anymore. We go to the render window, and I set my source to master mix, and then bounds. We now have a new option for all project markers or selected markers. So if I go to selected markers, and I have two markers selected, it's going to render a area of the project from marker one to two, and another from two to three. So this even though this marker is not selected, marker three, that is still going to be the end point for marker two. And when we're rendering these, we can call these something like, um, give it the project name, a dash, dollar sign, and then marker number, and then dash, dollar sign, marker uh, will do the marker name, and then for all files, what we see here, untitled 01 for the marker number, and then equals start for the marker name. For a real project, this would obviously be things like marking for verse and chorus, uh, chorus to pre-chorus, that sort of thing. Or if it's a album project, then you would be rendering your different songs within the project that were marked by markers rather than marked by regions. If we use all project markers, that last marker in the project will be used as the end marker. And so even though there are four markers here, there's really only three sections of the project that have uh, that would have content in it that gets rendered. So we'd need to have a equals end, not plus, equals, equals end, and then we get all four of those files rendered. So just keep that in mind. Is always going to use the last marker as your endpoint if you're using the uh, all project markers. Otherwise, with selected markers, it's going to use the next one. The selected markers option gives you a way to, let's say, render between uh, A and B and B and C. And then these two would be rendered, and this one wouldn't, and this one wouldn't. Or we can skip one in between. And then we've got A to B rendering and C to the end rendering. Moving on, there's a few more things for rendering. Support fade in, fade out length and shapes. Menu item action to display HTML render statistics with file paths hidden. Display project title and author in HTML render statistics if they are set. Display RMS-RA, RMS-based dynamic range measurements when LRA, LUFS, based dynamic range is not calculated. Simplify loudness statistics preferences and improve render statistics calculation CPU usage. Rendering with fades this is kind of interesting. If we go to the normalized limit fade, this button is now renamed. 
uh, in here we've got a, a few new options. So we've got fade in for a certain amount. Let's do a 25 millisecond fade. We can choose the shape, linear, exponential, and any other curve. Fade out, we can make this uh, 2000, so it fades out the last two seconds of the project. And we can set that to whatever shape we want. Uh, this window is actually renamed the post process render. Uh, like the normalize function, it renders the project, then applies some processing to hit the certain uh, normalize level, or it runs the brick wall limiter on it. With these new options, it's fading in or out. So originally when I read this changelog line, I was expecting it to be with the tail option, which is um, essentially pre-render, but it does make sense to have this apply along with the normalization and things like that. That means that it's also in the batch converter, same button in the batch converter window, and you can apply a fade in or fade out to hundreds of files instantly now. Let's have a quick look in the preferences. There is a new thing here. So calculate statistics when rendering on the uh, audio rendering page. And this menu is just a little bit more simplified. You're either choosing RMS or you're choosing LUFS, peak or true peak, and that's it. So these are toggles and these are toggles. And yeah, that's it. When you do render, let's do a dry run render. And then click on stats slash charts. There's not really going to be any info in here, but we do have this option of opening render statistics in web browser. That's how we've had for the past, uh, I don't know, six months maybe, maybe not quite that long. Um, and render statistics with hide file paths. And so let's choose that hide file paths option. Web browser opens up and we've got our file here. So this is HTML file that you can send along with your mastering jobs, wherever you want to show things like the integrated loudness along with the list of files. And this export isn't showing the file path. If we do this other option, this one does have the path of where that render would go to. Maybe you want to hide that. I don't know. It was requested that that's something that they want hidden, uh, as well as adding in the project name in there. Uh, which we haven't set. So we'll just do that again. Remember this from a, a little while ago, if we go to project settings and then notes, we have the project title. So this is a 6.64 update render test by Reaper blog. And hit OK. If we render that again, doing a dry run render and show that render statistic, we've got the project title and the project author right there. If you want to send this to someone, you just press Command S on Mac or Control S PC, and then save it to your downloads folder or wherever you want to save it to. And it should automatically have that .html extension. Just make sure that it does, or you won't be able to open it. And that's it for render stuff. Up next, spectral edits, mouse modifier to create new edits. So if we go to Preferences, Editing Behavior, Mouse Modifiers, go to Media Item and Left Drag, we can do something like Shift Control, and sorry, there we go. Add Spectral Edit to all channels or add Spectral Edit to one channel. Let's do All Channels and apply that. So now if I'm in my timeline and I press Control, Shift, and Left Drag, I'm creating a Spectral Edit right there. And if you don't know spectral editing, it's another way to visualize audio and process it in a more surgical fashion. So up and down is frequency content. The intensity of the color is how loud that particular frequency is. So let's take the low frequencies here in this area and we can apply a, uh, fade in so it's not so abrupt of a change. And then we can turn down the gain. And this would be kind of similar to using an, a high pass filter sort of thing. And this fade is kind of like the, the steepness of that filter. We could also apply compression or gating to that area. And we can fade in and out the, uh, the in and out points of this. We can even do things like editing 
kind of the shape of that spectral edit. It's a little bit tricky. There are other tools like Isotope RX that makes the spectral editing much easier. So once again, I've created a mouse modifier so that I can quickly jump from normal editing into adding a spectral edit at a certain point. Let's do this spot right here and just turn that down and then fade that in, fade that out, fade the lows in and the highs in, and there's our spectral edit. Spectral editing was added to Reaper quite a long time ago. So if you check the playlist linked down below of all of the Reaper updates, you will learn how to use this tool. For JSFX, support automating and undo for user mix volume sliders in Channel Mapper plugin. I'm gonna add in the Channel Mapper plugin here. So just go to the JS category and then type in Channel Mapper. And there we go, Channel Mapper Down Mixer from Kakos. Add this to a track. Let's set this to 10 channels. So this has 10 inputs and 10 outputs now. If we click on User Mix, we've got these volume adjustments up here at the top. So each of the inputs coming into that track can be adjusted. We can also link those, uh, those faders. And what's new here is that if we go to the param menu, Go to FX parameter list, show track envelope or link, uh, show in track controls or parameter modulation MIDI link or MIDI learn. We've got a volume parameter for up to channel 64. And then we'll also see bypass wet and delta in there. Uh, plus if we make a change here, we can also undo that change. So I can actually go back all the way back to the starting point there. So it's a pretty simple change. They've added undo and they've added automating for the user mix volumes. For the Media Explorer, support for column width order presets in the column header right-click menu, actions to load column presets, loudness column loudness calculation, option to normalize preview volume to minus 12 LU, adjusted for mono media if needed, if loudness has been calculated, Separate actions to calculate peak volume, loudness, or dry run statistics. Respect take channel mode when normalizing media items to target loudness. We've got the different column headers here. So right now I'm showing loudness, favorites, mark, file name, size. So the whole header column function has been reorganized. So we've got the show hide column. This is kind of what was visible before, but we've also got the user columns here, uh, it's, it's an all new menu. Uh, the new features here are save column order preset. So let's save this as default. Okay. And let's start hiding some of the columns. So let's turn off temporary mark. Let's turn off the modification date, the, uh, the file type, the artist name, album name, genre, BPM, and key. I can keep going. Maybe an option to uncheck all of them would be nice to have here. Or to not have this menu close when uh, when going through here, because this, it gets repetitive for sure. And also I'll turn off the uh, user column. And so let's also save that column order preset. Let's call this two. So I'll zoom out here, right click, load order default, and then load order two. And of course, this is called a column order. So we can also rearrange the order. Let's remove title. Let's put size first, size, file name, length, rate, channel. So we'll just save this. And so if I go to load order default, that's everything. If I go to load number two, that puts everything in, in the same order and the same show hide options. One of these new options is loudness. And if I take a file like, like that one, if I right click on it, calculate peak volume and loudness for media, I can see that that's minus 24. Let's take a selection of items. So all these, right-click, calculate peak and volume 
loudness for media. And if some of them don't, I guess that just means it's a silent item. Yep, those items are silent. I should probably get rid of those. And then we get into the normalize options. If you don't see the menu because your Media Explorer is docked in your main window, you just have to right click in kind of this transport area or, or really any like empty area of it and it'll bring up the menu. Go into options and then normalize. We can normalize the preview volume to zero. We can normalize a preview volume to minus 12 if loudness has been calculated and apply normalized volume to in the inserted media. If we normalize our preview volume, everything will be playing back more consistent levels. So I have no idea what these files are. So this original file was minus 34, but if I'm playing it back at minus 12, it's gonna be louder than original. Yeah. And then this one was minus 10. So that's going to be played back 2 dB quieter than the original recording. And this one, that one went up by 12 dB. And essentially that's what the, the normalize does. It calculates what the loudness is. If minus 12 is the, uh, the standard, then it just adds in gain to hit that loudness level. What if we don't want that particular loudness level? Minus 12 is the standard, but we want this normalized to minus 16. So we just set our preview volume to minus four. Can we, can we type in? No. Well, minus 4.2 is gonna be close enough there. But yeah, that's how you would get to that minus 16 level. And for that normalization, it's going to be slightly different depending on the number of channels. So if it's a mono item, it's going to do that differently than stereo or multi-channel. And that change also applies to the action to normalize items. You'll find that in the action list or in item properties. And that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment with your favorite feature added in this update and any features you'd like to see added in the future. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.